Top 9 B-Movie Alien Rip-Offs That Are Fun To Watch When You Are Drunk Our curiosity for extraterrestrial beings has fueled several movies that involve alien creatures. However, the movie Alien by Ridley Scott in 1979 is one of the stalwarts in the genre. It is regarded as one of the landmark movies in the sci-fi genre, and ever since its overwhelming success, filmmakers have tried to replicate the brilliance time and time again. Once, someone had sarcastically remarked that good artists copy, but the great artists steal. While several attempts have been made, some have subtly derived from Alien, while others are obviously copies. None of the attempts to duplicate Alien has resulted in another classic, but they are still fun to watch with a couple of beers. In this video, we have put together nine such B-movies that are inspired a bit too heavily by the film Alien. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. In Seminoid 1981. A team of interplanetary archaeologists is conducting research on an ancient civilization in a lab located on a distant planet. A crew member, Sandy, is attacked by an alien creature that rapes and impregnates her. She starts to change into a murderous, bloodthirsty woman who stalks her colleagues to kill them off one by one. The caves where they are working in get blocked due to some explosions, and the survivors have nowhere to run. Inseminoid was not only under scrutiny for the blatant replication of Alien, but also controversial for the portrayal of women and pregnancy. The creature and its mannerisms certainly take a leaf out of Alien, and the makers even pull off the feeling of claustrophobia just like Alien. The sets were the damp, cold, and narrow Chislehurst Caves, and although it proves to be a great location, the conditions proved detrimental for the filming equipment. The movie is fast-paced, with plenty of gory violence on offer. When Sandy becomes the crazy, hysterical woman with super strength who kills for blood to feed the alien offspring, things take a brutal turn. Even with the half-baked script and laughable dialogue, it turns out to be quite an engaging sci-fi horror. The special effects have low budget written all over them, and the acting performances provide no respite as well. But then, it was never made to win awards, but simply to entertain you. You can criticize this all you want, but it continues to be viewed even today as a mindless fun movie for a beer party. Alien 2 on Earth 1980 Following a failed deep space mission, a spaceship returns to Earth, but the occupants are missing. Instead, it seems to have brought back a deep dark secret in the form of pulsating blue rocks. During a cave expedition, one of the members stumble across such a blue rock and keeps it with him. It soon turns out that the rock opens up to expose the terrifying creature that slaughters everyone around it. When two survivors finally make it out of the caves into the city, they realize that the alien forces have taken over the planet. Within a year of the grand success of the movie Alien, its Italian B-movie counterpart made its way to the theater. The director released it before Fox Studios could trademark the title, thereby depriving James Cameron of using the title Alien 2. The plot is obviously a brazen ripoff from Alien, but they made the alien creature resemble pulsating blue stones. Its modus operandi also differed slightly as, instead of clinging to the face like in the alien movie, it straight away tears it off. Besides this, when the creatures burst out of the victim's body, it does not burst from the chest like an alien, but from the face. But a cat still remains a cat, 
If you paint it like a tiger, right? The grainy stock footage is certainly not the kind of special effects you would want from such a movie. It does promise an absolute gore fest, much to the delight of the fans. You have scenes where heads are exploding to reveal thrashing tentacles and eyeballs being pushed out of their sockets. What it lacks in substance, the movie makes up with its entertainment value. And if you're up for wacky fun, it'll fit in just fine. <laughs> Contamination Alien on Earth, aka Toxic Spawn, 1980. A strange abandoned cargo ship drifts into New York Harbor out of nowhere. It contains some mysterious alien eggs in hidden cargo, and these eggs are capable of releasing a form of slime that can potentially infect the victims with alien spores. Soon enough, the body of the victim explodes, releasing the spores. Upon further investigation, these green pulsating eggs is discovered that a one-eyed Martian creature is manufacturing these eggs in South America. The beast must be dealt with before it's too late. It has been learned that a lot of the story was supposed to dwell on the movie Alien, but a lot of it wasn't possible due to budgetary constraints. The setting was moved to Earth instead of space and the creature was made to look like a monster from some Lovecraftian story with tentacles and a single cyclops-like eye. However, the appearance of the eggs would certainly remind you of Alien, and if that isn't enough, they have copied the entire chest-bursting scene. If you are watching this, make sure to get your hands on the uncut version. However, we must warn you about the fair bit of gore in the uncut version, where you will find stomachs exploding and guts flying all over the place. Sometimes all your mind needs is an awful yet entertaining flick over a couple of beers, and this is just the one to fit the bill. Is that it has the vision of a young James Cameron who worked on the special effects and designing in this movie. The giants of this genre. The Intruder Within, 1981. Drilling work is underway in an oil rig near Antarctica. During the excavations, the personnel accidentally unearth some prehistoric eggs. Trouble begins when one of these eggs hatches into a deadly, unstoppable creature. It had remained dormant since the beginning of time, and now it unleashes its devastating consequences on those around the region. Can they get rid of this large, fanged, humanoid beast before it's too late? The only plausible difference that this movie has with Alien is that it's premised at sea instead of space. You don't have a spaceship, but an oil rig where all the action takes place. Otherwise, there are some glaring similarities, such as the crew member going crazy after being infected by the alien matter or the snake-like creature. The movie could have been presented better had it not been for the campy special effects that certify a conventional B-movie tag on this one. It was made for TV, and lacks the intense violence or gore that you can find in movies like Predator or Alien. The monster is simply a costume, but the idea by the famous James Cummins, we must admit, is somewhat intimidating. It is a fun story with plenty of entertainment on offer. The ending, however, is a bit confusing and doesn't offer the best closure. Forbidden World, 1982. In an overpopulated galaxy, a food crisis is looming large, and people are starving. In an attempt to prepare a new food source, scientists are manipulating life forms at their research station. However, their efforts go awfully wrong when they accidentally create a monster that mutates into a slimy black beast with sharp teeth. The best Federation Marshal is summoned in this hour of crisis, and as the creature goes about killing the personnel of the facility, he must act fast to stop it. Galaxy of Terror had just been filmed, and the sets, along with the props, remained to be used again. Using the spaceship and robot props, this was another alien-inspired movie to deliver something unique. 
The creature used has the familiar long phallic head, and it's no surprise that Roger Corman was once again the producer. It seems like he could never get enough of alien-inspired plots. The creature design, almost resembling a grinning skulled alien being, had the potential to be better with the use of better effects. The usual expectations from such movies are all going to be met, as you have everything from plentiful gore, slimy alien killings, laser battles in space, and all you might want for a relaxing evening. <laughs> Creature 1985 Creature puts forward another story of a space expedition gone wrong. The story revolves around a group of scientists who arrive in Titan to examine the archaic artifacts of mysterious origin. After a faulty landing, they seek out the help of the previously landed German scientists, only to find their mutilated dead bodies. It becomes clear that some alien being has awoken to life, and it becomes increasingly difficult to survive the situation. We have to say that Creature is among the better attempts at recreating the magic for Alien. For starters, you have some impressive set design and cinematography that makes for a pleasant viewing experience. The story has an uncanny similarity, but the uniqueness lies in the Creature. It is more of a flaccid version of the phallic monster from Alien. You would love the creature effects, but we personally feel that the creature shouldn't have been so slow to move. This film offers all the low-budget alien gore that you might want. Performances by the talented cast consisting of Stan Ivar, Lyman Ward, and Wendy Shaw deserve special mention. The brilliant work with the costumes and sets makes it special amongst the several impersonators of Alien. You would think that after all the failed expeditions to space resulting in fatal alien encounters, the astronauts would learn. But every few years another movie seemed to come along where they make the same mistakes. Extro 2, The Second Encounter, 1990. At a secret research facility, the scientists manage to create a portal that opens into another dimension. When three explorers are sent through it, they are attacked, and only one survivor manages to come back. However, she is carrying one of the creatures that attacked them, and soon it bursts out of her just like an alien. It is now up to a team of hardened soldiers to hunt down the horrific monster. The first extra movie has an original story, and except a scene here and there, you would find little similarity with Alien. The same, however, cannot be said about Extro 2, that seems to be heavily inspired by both Alien and Alien. Besides the similarities in the story, or how the creature breaks out of the human body, you will also notice some details, like the smart guns used by the soldiers. However, the movie stands out when it comes to stunning creature design. The appearance was quite frightening, and the gruesome attacks by this flesh-eating monster are often too brutal and gory. The unrelenting tension of the plot will hold you in your seats, and the fast-paced narrative is a treat to watch. Yes, you'll have some issues with the loopholes in the plot, the choppy special effects, and maybe a hundred other things. Just watch it for a fun movie night with friends, and we promise you won't be disappointed. <laughs> the Terror Within, 1989 in the aftermath of a terrible chemical war, the world is filled with mutated monsters, making the surface inhabitable. A group of survivors lives underground, evading these murderous mutants. However, peace is short-lived after they rescue a woman who has been impregnated by one of the monsters. When her vicious offspring arrives, the security of the group is threatened, and as they try to hunt down the beast, they are being killed one by one. Roger Corman is no stranger when it comes to alien ripoffs, and was also behind the movie Galaxy of Terror. The Terror Within is another such attempt, where you have the same old story in a new mold. The gargoyle-like creatures have been well-crafted, 
and these monsters rape and impregnate the surviving women. The makers have paid particular attention to the set details, but that being said, do not expect anything as fancy as Alien or Star Wars. This movie promises excessive amounts of gore, with blood flowing like a stream and entrails being strewn all over the place. In one of the scenes, a mutant is trapped in the ventilation shaft and gets sliced and diced by the fan blades. The cinematography was handled by Janusz Kaminski, the man who later went on to win Oscars for movies like Saving Private Ryan and Schindler's List. But there isn't much magic to work on a film that clearly wants to do nothing more than being the perfect drunken entertainment. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.